Hey guys, uh, welcome back. This is Remy from uh, Do and Learn. Hope you people are doing good. Uh, so today we are gonna st start a new course. This course is a series of uh, videos. So if you are already subscribed, then it's cool. If not, please do subscribe to get the frequent updates. Now, uh, what's this course about? So uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, the course is uh, titled uh, Digital Principles and System Design. So ultimate goal here is to design a digital circuit. Let's keep it pretty simple. Uh, we have one major goal. Our goal is to design a digital circuit with the help of the basic and advanced digital principles So uh, what we are going to learn in this course. So in this video, uh, we'll have a small intro to this course first of all. And uh, then later on in the upcoming courses or upcoming videos, we will try to explore the whole course as we progress. So uh, let's get started. Here we are. So uh, let's uh, start with a simple question. What do you mean by a digital system? See, uh, all the uh, equipment or kind of electronic devices or gadgets or whatever thing that is surrounding us in this new technological world is made up of a digital system. Uh, let's take a small example of a computer or a tablet or even the mobile what we have in our hand. Then uh, on the image uh, you can see a small uh, fingerprint reader. But uh, it doesn't show just a reader alone but along with the reader we have certain components connected to them. Then we have a simple image which shows you a lot of items. So we have a webcam, we have a microphone, we have a USB. Then a monitor, speakers, digital camera, you name it. Just everything or electronic gadgets or whatever electronic elements we have around us is composed of a digital system. So what do we exactly mean by it? So a digital system is nothing but an interconnection of digital modules. So it consumes a lot of information but the information is transformed into a digital nature and it is thrown into a processing system further which will give us a lot more meaningful data that's what we want so when we speak about a digital system it's not only the uh, thing about the modules or interconnection of digital modules but one of the main characteristics of a digital system is the ability to represent and manipulate discrete elements of information so what do we mean by your uh, discrete elements of information because that's a kind of a jargon what we have here. So the major idea here is uh, any set or you know set is a group or any group or set that is restricted to a finite number of elements can be called as a discrete information. So uh, let's uh, take an example of you know, uh, an USB. The data that has been transferred by USB is uh, technically speaking ones and zeros where 1 and 0 comes under a set and the set is uh, consisting of a finite number of elements just two elements one element is 0 and one element is 1 so similarly you can take another example of uh, alphabets so the alphabets in english language we have almost 26 alphabets and uh, we cannot say that i have 11.5 or 10.6 alphabets 10 is a whole number, I can have 10 alphabets or I can have 20 alphabets or I can have 26 alphabets in my vocabulary but uh, I'm pretty sure that we cannot say that we have 12.3 alphabets or 12.5. So the data that we try to consume here is very discrete in nature and also it's kind of restricted to some kind of a limitation. So here the examples what we quote had a limitation of 26 for alphabets but when we spoke about numbers 1 and 0, we had a limitation of just 2. So that's how we are trying to understand a digital system. So how, why don't we compare a digital system with an analog system here? So when we speak about an analog system, uh, let's take a small example. We have an image here and uh, we have two elements here. One is a uh, digital clock and another one you can see is an uh, analog clock. Let me just uh, zoom in so that we can have a better view. So what's the core concept of this uh, image? So the first point is that uh, let me take this uh, digital clock. I cannot find a time like 12.45 and 36.8 seconds. So that's not possible here. So my clock here gives me a precise information. Like the current time is 12.45 and it is 36 seconds. Maybe the next moment I might get 12, 45, 37, 
But the same concept when you try to compare with an analog clock, it's possible for me to find the continuous data here. Even I can try to find out 1245 36.6 .6 seconds if possible if I try to zoom in. So the point here is when we have continuous data in our system that corresponds to analog and uh, when we have very discrete information or distinct information that goes to digital system. So let's try to understand this in the form of uh, signals where your analog signals has continuous variation. It takes a large number of huge data whereas your digital system takes samples of them. So uh, we can uh, assume total range of frequencies per unit time in an analog system whereas in your digital system it's just on and off or you know true or false or just one and zero. Uh, with respect to the information that has been transferred or transmitted all the information is transferred transmitted in your analog system whereas when you have a digital system you are just trying to convert that into zeros and ones. Um, Apart from that, we can try to understand what a digital system versus analog system is with respect to the data here. This is pretty important for us and also that gives us a clearer information. Your analog data is pretty continuous data. Of course, we have seen this from the first slide and your digital data is discrete information. And the point what you have here uh, gives you an exact uh, uh, example. For example, uh, we have a person's height. Uh, let's take uh, we are talking about a person and we want to you know, convey his height information. It could be like 147.3 centimeters and it could be like 157.8 centimeters or it could vary. I can have continuous data whatever you just term it. Whereas when you have a digital data it is very precise and also we can have only like you know, uh, certain values. For example, if you take the count of number of students in a classroom uh, we cannot have a number or value like 27.8 that doesn't mean anything to us 27 means something to us 28 means another thing to us but the number of students inside a classroom cannot be 27.8 i cannot have a 0.8 student it's not possible okay similarly the result of rolling a dice here when we roll a dice and the outcome of rolling a dice could be like six or five or four or three it can never be like 4.5 or 4.8 here we are trying to sample the values and also we are trying to have discrete data elements. So that's where our digital data lies. Hope it is clear for you people. Moving on. So the course is designed in such a way that uh, we have around eight outcomes here. But our ultimate goal here is pretty simple. We will be designing a digital system. But in order to design a digital system, we are uh, focused on a lot more important principles and concepts behind the system. Uh, designing a digital watch is not a simple job. And designing a simple digital system which could calculate something and give us some output is not a simple job. It, uh, at the end of the day, it all you know, depends on the type of principles and uh, type of calculations what we use there, type of decision making methodologies what we use there in order to bring out a digital system. So speaking further, we have the first outcome is that we try to form some boolean functions first of all with uh, mathematical nature and we try to simplify those boolean functions. Here one important concept is when we speak about uh, digital systems, the portability of the system is really an important factor. So if you have a large or huge computer you cannot just carry it around. But nowadays we do have a lot of mobiles which exactly enact your computers. So what I try, what I'm trying to mean here is your mobiles do a lot of job that even your computers do nowadays. So the ultimate point is that in order to bring out the best digital system, it has to be portable and it has to be handy. At the same time, it has to be more efficient. So if you want to build a system like that, you need to you know, simplify a lot of components inside a digital system. So when we speak about components, these are hardware components. So simplifying them is not a, just, you know, an easy job but of course we are going to learn that throughout the course and then we will try to apply those concepts and our ultimate goal here will be like reducing the huge hardware circuits into a smaller one so that we can accommodate lot more circuits so that your uh, circuit is really efficient and then we will uh, go on to find out all the other course outcomes here the first one we try to analyze and design combinational circuits which we will learn further and uh, as you can see here we have around eight course outcomes so the knowledge levels what we have written here is uh, starting from k3 and it stops at k5 so the idea behind leaving out k1 and k2 is like 
remembering and understanding is not a cup of tea of course it has to be remembered and it has to be understood in order to apply your course here so you people are in i guess uh, you people are in your undergraduate now so you should be able to apply the concepts what you have learned in your previous semesters and of course that's why the knowledge level or you no know, the complexity of this course starts with k3 where you can apply the concepts so you'll be finding lot of exercises as we progress through the course you will be finding lot of problems to be solved and you will find it really interesting i bet that okay and also we limit ourselves not to go to the sixth level which is like creating stuffs so what we are trying to you know reach here or our ultimate goal is that just try to apply the principles what we learn in this subject in this course to your problem statements so you might have a certain problem statement like you know uh, you want to do or you want to do some small stuff and you want to uh, do that in a hardware so of course you can go for it we can design a small digital system and uh, we can try to implement that digital uh, logic into a hardware we can try to test that so all these things are covered in this course moving on further yeah this is the last slide what i have for today's video so it's pretty simple we have three goals in this course of course the major goal is designing a digital circuit and then now uh, once you design your digital circuit you cannot just uh, you know market it out or you cannot just give it to a client and ask him to work on it it's not at all possible so of course you have to design and uh, test your digital system yeah we'll be teaching you how to test your digital system here and finally it's not only an hardware oriented course we do have a lot of softwares which can simulate your digital systems so we will be just brushing over those software components here which will help us to simulate the digital systems and once we are convinced with those outputs obtained by the uh, simulation software we will try to fabricate into an hardware unit that's it hope uh, the concepts are clear and uh, i guess this acts as a good uh, introduction for your course so if you have any further queries please to let us know we can email me or you can just put in the comment section we will try to solve it out as soon as possible thank you for your time happy learning i'll see you in the next video thank you